Welcome to Poets from the Neighborhood. I am Viraja R. And I'm David M. Harris. We hope you'll enjoy the poems we'll be reading today, poems written by your friends and neighbors. We'll start today with Whose Streets by Joseph Seward Powell. Whose streets? You mean these streets where I see kids playing basketball in netless hoops, shirts versus skins for hours on end until the sun goes down? Where ice cream trucks cut back and forth, blaring the only music that'll make you stop in your tracks to buy a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of respite? These streets where we're trying to build community here, if you give us a chance, if we can catch us a break. We're trying to draw out dreams from occasional nightmares, making boys into men and girls into unhidden figures who will one day run the world. These streets where the homeless guy on the corner selling contributor papers coexists with the single mother holding down two jobs to feed and clothe her grade school kids. These streets where it's still taking a village to raise several children where Reverend Jones of the Missionary Baptist Church and Father Michael from the Holy Name Catholic Church know everybody in the neighborhood by name, because that's what neighborhood means. These streets where reality meets imagination, and that's always a good thing. These streets of poets and teachers, rappers and athletes, children who are our future, future doctors and lawyers, businessmen and women, maybe even no, not maybe, definitely, president. These streets from Chi-Town to Harlem, from Compton to Ferguson, from Detroit to North, South, and East Nashville. Whose streets? His streets. Whose streets? Her streets. Whose streets? Your streets. Whose streets? Our streets. Our streets. Our streets. The Wind, written by Louis Collin. Three of us walk a country road, walk north into the north wind. Me on his right, brother on his left. The world was wind, cemented with dust around us, between us, over us. Pushes us south, our bodies lean north. Legs heave against solid air. Knees frozen flat, feet scrape, step by step. Sister at home climbs across a giant fallen oak, clings to its dying branches, looks for our bodies beneath it. It was air gone wild, gifting a blessed memory, the feel of his hand, wrapping mine steady against the storm. And now a poem of mine. Acting with Harry Morgan. The crew is setting up lights and props and sets, looking over the day's script, checking cameras and sound equipment. And the old man is walking around, saying hello to everyone. I'm Harry Morgan, he says, as though we have never watched MASH or The Big Clock. We're doing a commercial in which Harry will talk with an announcer who will be dubbed in later. I'm the script supervisor, so I have a copy of the script, and I'm going to read the announcer's lines. This is New York, and this is the film business, so we see faces all the time. I've worked on sets with Oscar winners, Tony winners. Why does Harry Morgan intimidate me? First take, and I read the lines dead flat. Who am I to pretend to act with the beloved Colonel Potter? I've met stars, worked with them, but always before a clear line between the talent and the crew. But Harry says, he told us to call him Harry, give me something to work with. My mind goes back to college theatricals. My voice deepens. Some part of me becomes an announcer of sorts. As he is leaving, Harry shakes my hand and says, good job. I will never get a better review. Enduring, written by S. R. Lee. Enduring external gift, 
cooking small apples, skill passed down from an old woman with an old apple tree practiced through decades. Wherever an apple tree grew close, the young woman repeated the gift and in time grew old herself, still cooking small sour apples into sweet sauce, an external, easily given gift. The many internal gifts bequeathed by the same old woman endured through the decades, making the apple sauce blessed. And another poem of mine, Seeking Spring. Driving home today in a warm jacket with the heat on past red buds and dogwoods in early bloom, the shock of spring after a hard winter. For the moment we'll see more frost, wear scarves, but soon I'll be able to close the whole closet and leave it closed for a while. Stop wearing socks until fall rolls back in. Let my aloha shirts bloom, plant this year's tomatoes and peppers. Until then, though, I'll keep a close watch on the calendar. Collateral Magical Thinking for Andrea Cohen, written by Rick Hillis. When Dad says he sees his best friend Ed, dead now two months, and that they like to go to his favorite restaurant, a deli, Davitis for lunch. When I know it's closed, I tell him that his mother, dead now two decades, says she she's finally ready to make him his favorite pie. He says, I know. She told me yesterday, not with her voice, but with her eyes. He says, black peaches impossible to find, so tender and delicious. Thank you for watching Poets from the Neighborhood. We hope you'll join us again soon.